quickly, let me, let me just run through the courses in the MBA program. The first one, the one that uh, we are involved in, is the MBA 501 Graduate Management Foundations course. Uh, then it's followed up with an organizational behavior course. course organizational behavioral behavior, of course, is a, a question of uh, behavioral structure and culture and and how human beings behave in organizations. Macroeconomics is about the overall economy, uh, unemployment, inflation, the stuff that's go that's sort of crazy right now. That's uh, that, that's the course I teach frequently and. Uh, uh, that's the third course, and this is usually the order of the course. There's a course in strategic marketing where we, where you learn how to market products and organizations and things of that nature. Uh, there's a managerial accounting course followed by that where you uh, uh, really look look at uh, how to uh, operate more efficiently, really from, uh, or co coming up with uh, concepts in, in accounting that will enable you to analyze your operations a little bit better and uh, try to figure out where your where your problems are. Uh, there's a project management course which is what it says it is, shows you how to manage projects. Uh, and there's a managerial economics course which unlike the macroeconomics course which, which focuses on the overall economy, the managerial economics course focuses on the individual markets and firms and how decisions are the courses continue with financial management, which is, which is a course that looks at the uh, overall financial structure of the firm and tries to figure out how to uh, to organize the financial structure of the firm in terms of its assets and its debt and its equity and uh, to see how to uh, uh, more effectively increase the return on, on, on equity uh, to more effectively increase the value of the firm. A multinational human resources management is a little bit misnamed. It's really an international management course that talks about how to manage people in, in internationally. Uh, technology and management is a is is a technology course uh, uh, focusing on uh, information systems, and uh, financial markets talks a little bit about how financial markets function. It's a little bit of uh, financial management mixed with macroeconomics, where we try to figure out why interest rates are going up and down, why. Uh, uh, the stock market is going up and down. Some of it's uh, covered in macro, some is covered in financial markets, where you learn about the different types of financial markets. Uh, there's, of course, on ethical and legal issues. And uh, uh, then finally, we get into the capstone uh, and strategic management. They go together. This is a, the, the capstone is a simulation that's used in, in the strategic management course to uh, integrate a lot of the materials and help you apply the subjects that were learned. Uh, during the program. We, we have very high expectations of, of CMB's MBA faculty members, as I'm sure you will have. Um, they, are, they are specially picked. Uh, they, they have to apply for the job. They are reviewed by the administration, and they're reviewed by faculty, and they're interviewed, and we have very high expectations, and they're trained, uh, and they have to go through a lot of training in order to uh, be able to uh, to become an MBA faculty member at NLU. One of the things we expect for them is for, to, activi to activate the, the customized course website, including the syllabus, two or more weeks before the first session. Uh, that doesn't mean that every single thing will be perfectly done, but you should have a very good idea of what's in the class. And you should be able to walk through the website and have a, 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 a really good view of what's going to be in your class at that time two weeks ahead of time. We expect that, 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 that as part of this website, there is a clarification of all graded assignments, that in most cases there will be a grading rubric specifying how grades will be assigned in that assignment so that you'll understand what you have to do. And there should be an overall grading scheme for each course. That is, a, for example, you have 100 points, and this is how many points are allocated to each assignment, and they add up to 100. And so we, we don't want you to be guessing about this stuff. It's supposed to be there. The course materials, activities, assignments, and examples should have ac applicability to real organizational issues. We are not interested in theory for theory's sake. As it happens, we... Uh, we pay a lot of money to have these 
courses developed, and the courses are develop are not approved until the course material does have this applicability to reorganizational issues, and we expect a faculty member to adhere to that organization to those courses, and keep that uh, focus on on real organizational issues. We expect faculty members to respond within a reasonable time frame. 24 to 40 hours, say, to student discussion postings. I try to do that. I mean, there are times when you can't get back, back in 24 hours, but uh, we want a prompt response to students so students know you read it, and, and it should be a reasonable response. I personally try to clarify things if, if there needs to be uh, some additional things for the student to do in order to get to, under, to show me they understand everything and get a great grade, I'll tell them what I want. So I think that we want quick responses and we want instructors involved in these discussion forums and uh, in, in all their activities that the students engage in, other assignments, that you might not be able to get a 24-hour return on a final paper, but we want prompt returns that we want prompt returns and we want the, the instructors providing feedback that is of educational value that is helpful we expect that the instructor will provide grades for discussion postings and other assignments within a reasonable time frame I I can't say what that time frame is but it ought it ought to be a reasonable time frame it ought to be quick and we have uh, uh, grade books that that are electronically on the blackboard site and uh, we hope the, that the instructors will use those grade books we expect them to and um, I try to, you know, I try to get all my grading done fairly promptly. Discussion forums and assignments can be pretty, pretty complex, but certainly within a few days, I try to get discussion forums back. And if it's a complex assignment, and I have to wait for everybody to turn their stuff in, it might take me a week. But it ought to be fairly quick. We expect instructors to use a variety of instructional methodologies uh, as appropriate to the subject matter. As I said, some subjects like econ and accounting may require more more PowerPoint work because we, we have to make sure that these difficult economic and accounting concepts come across uh, before we can assign the, uh, the practical work that is needed. Uh, so the, the, the variety is different in different subjects, but there ought to be a variety of, of instructional methodologies used. We expect that grades will be posted within one week after the end of the course or one week after the due date of the last deliverable. I mean, if you give people a week to get their final paper in, then we, we know it's going to take some time before you can grade all those final papers. So it may take a week after that final assignment to get grades in. We expect classes to last approximately four hours for regular class sessions. And in terms of the online discussions, we expect uh, we expect things to occur in online classes that are equivalent of what goes on in the classroom. So that if there are four, if there are four hours of interaction going on in the classroom, we expect four hours of interaction to go on in the online learning site. In addition, uh, all classes have a 50% increase in, in the activity of online activities. The face-to-face -to -face classes uh, have four hours face-to-face, -face, and then we expect at least two more hours of online interaction. Uh, so uh, we expect the same thing uh, for the online classes. So in general, we would expect six hours of interaction between faculty and instructors in a class or more uh, in, in, these, in the classes that we have. We expect significant interaction. We're not letting online students uh, go and read books and then come back and not interact with them. We expect an interaction that is very similar to and equivalent to what goes on in the classroom. So have expectations of, of NBA students. We expect you to be actively involved in the class and showing that by engaging in prompt and useful interactions with your classmates. There, there are going to be a lot of discussion forums. There may be teamwork. We expect you to show your, that you are actively interested in, in the coursework and uh, that you are involved in it. We want to, you to make sure that you're prepared for the discussions and other assignments. Uh, going into the discussions without adequate preparation, turning in assignments without adequate preparation, uh, is not going to be is not going to be useful for you. 
Uh, we expect graded assignments to be completed on time. Uh, if you can't do so, we need to know about it ahead of time and, and, and you need to contact us. We expect you to submit work that is your own. We do not uh, we do not contone any form of plagiarism. You need to really review that. That's a very important issue with all the faculty members at National Lewis University. Um, we expect you to respond positively to instructors and classmates' feedback. Take it as an opportunity to learn rather than as criticism. The, especially in online courses where the discussion forum becomes a primary mechanism for learning, instructors sh should be actively involved and they should be looking at what you say and if what you're saying isn't exactly on target, they ought to be moving you toward the target. So there will be some stuff that could be construed as criticism, but it's really just part of the learning experience and I do hope you take it in that positive vein because that that is going to be one of the major ways that in which learning can take place in an online program. We think you should communicate directly with your instructor quickly if you have a problem. Instructors are always willing to help. I know I am. If you have a problem, I want to know about it. If I can help, I'll help. Uh, if, if you can't do something that I expect, make sure I know about it in advance. Instructors, for the most part, will have grading rubrics for most of their assignments. In this course, there's a grading rubric for discussions and a grading rubric for assignments. And uh, you should pay attention to those rubrics because that will be the basis for the grading. The, they'll be allocating points based upon those grading rubrics. Ask questions if you don't understand course concepts or assigned requirements. We love questions. It means you're paying attention. Uh, uh, nobody's going to get upset by questions. We sometimes get upset, upset by no questions uh, if, if uh, people don't understand things, but we never get upset by, by questions. We're trying to help you learn. We'll do whatever we can to do so. Never use outside sources in any of your responses or assignments without appropriate attribution. 
if you're taking stuff from anywhere, whether whether it's a direct quote or whether you're taking, uh, you, you're, you're using your own words to uh, out, out of a, uh, out of another source, you need to let us know because to tell you the truth, we are going to be able to tell, and it's considered plagiarism to use other people's other people's material from other articles or journals, whether you quote them or not quote them, and it's considered plagiarism not to cite your sources. It is a very important thing to do. Your outside sources should only be used to augment your own point of view. We're, we're trying to figure out what you know, what not, not what the New York Times knows. So if you're going to use the New York Times, you might use it to, to, to prove that your point is right or to show that the New York Times has the same viewpoint you have or it's an example of your viewpoint, but you can't use outside sources as a substitute for your viewpoint. We're not interested in what the New York Times knows. We're interested in what you know. Know your instructors and their particular requirements and preferences because each instructor will be different in some way and will emphasize different things. So that it's very important for you to sort of read what they have to say, what they have to tell you. If they have requirements, uh, make sure you, you think about what that particular instructor is asking you. Now, I'll, I'll make things as clear as I can in, in, in all that I do. I am looking forward to working with you and uh, and I'll do everything I can to help you along. If you need help, a lot of you will not. Uh, and uh, to make sure you learn what you need to learn as you move along in this course so that you'll be ready for the MBA program as we have it designed. So good luck, and I'll, uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, engaged in discussions fairly soon.